Welcome to The Culture Edit, unique perspectives into the personal and professional lives of individuals at the helm of successful business, athletics, art, and design. Welcome to The Culture Edit. Do you want to say hi to the guests? You haven't done that in a while. Hi, guests. All of you out there. It's a Sunday afternoon, quite brisk, uh, but not as brisk as yesterday. Uh, very sunny, very it's nice. Frigid. It's it is frigid. Um, For Atlanta, I don't like it. I don't. I don't like it's it. It's not why we live here to be this cold. We got to move to Miami. <laughs> <laughs> Sore subject. I'm just saying. Okay. Yeah, we've had a day. Like we have had a day. It feels like the day we've had a weekend. It was I like say. three days. Yeah, but it's just one day. Um, I'm so, exhausted. Yeah, you're exhausted. I went to a recovery run this morning with Atlanta Run Club. Met some really cool people. That was nice. But you had an even more adventurous day. You said it was the first time they were doing this. Yeah, the first time they did um, the Sunday. Or I, I think there's always been like a unofficial Sunday recovery run, but this is the first official Sunday recovery run, and it started from People's Town Coffee. Tell the people where People's Town is. People's Town. Do you it's know? Probably, yeah, no, I do. I, okay. I'm trying to explain it. Like, so it's 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 west of Grand. It's it's almost directly west of Grand Park. Okay. It's not even like southwest of Grand Park. So if you were to go past um, the old uh, old Braves Stadium, which is now obviously Georgia State Stadium, but for most people listening, they think of it as the Braves Stadium. Yeah. And you keep going south, which you would typically. Is in that. Uh, ch- Hank Aaron. Like if you keep going on Hank Aaron South. Well, no, I'm thinking, what's that development there? The oh, Summer Hill. So you keep Summer Hill. You, go, okay. you actually go quite far past Summer Hill. West or south? south. south. Oh, south of yeah. Summer Hill. Yeah. Okay. Wow. So you're okay. going south of Summer Hill. Wow. You definitely getting your license plate stolen. <laughs> yeah, but what's interesting is they've created so the so the belt line, the gravel belt line, goes over there. Yeah. And it's like this massive apartment development that's like super nice. And in the belt line, essentially goes through the middle of the apartments. I we talked about this earlier. We're gonna do a whole episode on the belt line. It's wild. Yeah. I mean, I am it's really. Weird. It's crazy living on the belt line. Yeah, I'm really that. excited for it to be paved. Um, once it is paved, but anyway, so People's Town Coffee. So People's Town is again south of Summer Hill, about maybe a mile, two miles south of Summer Hill. Um, but it was really nice. There's not much around it yet. I think People's Town Coffee might be the only thing kind of there. Yeah. But but tell us about your adventure. Well, I did airport ride, the infamous airport ride. We had our speed club ride yesterday. It was really, really cold, as everyone that lives in Atlanta knows. The real feel at the start was 19 degrees Fahrenheit, which is negative 6 or negative 5 Celsius. I only know that because Goose told me at the start. He was very uh, cranky Goose at the start because it was so <laughs> cold. Uh, and uh, that just kind of ride just drains you 70 miles. Mm-hmm. So I was exhausted going into today's airport ride. Um, I'm impressed you did the airport after yesterday. I was pretty, like, I was going through a lot just riding to the start. Yeah. Um, you left actually like 15 minutes early, which normally you just leave like 10 minutes early and cut it close. <laughs> yeah, because I knew I was so sore. I, yeah. couldn't, I couldn't go hard. <laughs> um, so it was a special airport. It's one of the ones that kind of live up to the reputation because it was so hard, so windy. Um Lots of people the got shelled. The perfect airport. Uh, crosswinds, echelons, all the all the fun stuff. But the 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 crazy thing was, so we had a tailwind on twenty nine. So mm-hmm. you go single file, averaging probably in the thirties, thirty miles an hour plus. Uh, and uh, then Chisel got a flat. He had just told me he got he had a double flat before. So he was like, it's never a good sign. Yeah, he he was going the opposite direction, turn around. So I said, "Do you have anything?" And I faintly heard him say, "I've got nothing." For those of you that don't know Chisel, <laughs> that's Chad's impression of his voice, I can't which wait is like to listen to this. pretty accurate, actually. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, uh, gave up my ride on 20. I mean, we we're already in Union City. What, did you give up your ride, or was it one of those things where you're like, "Oh, thank God." I can like drop back from the group now and wait with Chisel because I've had those moments where like someone gets a flat and I'm not even friends with them, but I'm like, I'll stop with them and help because I just don't, I can't ride that hard any longer. Uh, I mean, be honest. I, no, I was, I, I was sitting on the back. So I, I mean, I was, I could, it, in my mind, I'm, I'm a, a, 
I'm accepting a much longer time on the bike by doing that. Yeah. Like I could, I could continue to suffer and, and hang with the front mm -hmm. group and I would be over. It would be over. 30. Yeah. yeah it, it, I would be done with my ride 30 to 45 minutes quicker even, mm -hmm. or even more. But the interesting thing was, so I, I stopped, we changed the flat uh, while we were standing on the side of the interstate, watching all, all the people or interstate highway, um, watching all the people go by mm -hmm. the, that had been left behind. Uh, I felt a bunk coming on and this hasn't happened to me in a long time, but it was because it was so cold. Mm -hmm. And by the way, it was like in the thirties for our friends in Miami. Um, and I started getting like, like a full bonk lightheaded. And I just told Chisel, I was like, I can't pedal. Like we have to stop. So we stopped in East point at a gas station. You've never been to, I've never been to. When in, there was an altercation occurring between the owner of the gas station mm -hmm. Uh, and um, an unhoused individual. Mm -hmm. uh, and I go and I get a Coca-Cola. And this was happening inside the gas station? Inside the gas station. So, a full so altercation. like Throwing fists inside the gas station. They hadn't quite gotten a fist okay. inside. Okay. There was yelling. What was, what was the unhoused person? What, what was his What was his qualm? Uh, I didn't ask him. I, I, I Maybe he just wanted a warm place to stand. Which... Uh, uh, I get that though, because I've definitely stood inside gas stations before in an attempt to get warm. Yeah, I mean, he looked cold. Mm -hmm. um, sure, so freaking cold. I, they had a history though. There was oh, a history. I, see, I, I, see. I sensed there was a history a between turf, this a turf war between this this owner of this um, gas, gas station. station. Gas station. Gas yeah. station. Uh, I was trying to think. Was what, it not a gas station? I was trying to think of what Jacob always calls them. <laughs> yeah. Was he Jacob always? Uh, C store. C store. Yeah. In between this C store owner the and name the unhoused was individual. Had a history for the for I get, the for the foreigners listening that C store stands for convenience store right. in America, <laughs> which I guess it is convenient. So it, you don't have, it is convenient. you don't have these in Europe because nothing's convenient. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, so I get my Coca Cola. I got a uh, body armor for the bottle, uh, but it was the only option for Coca Cola was one of those giant cans. So like seven hundred grams of sugar. Yeah, yeah, uh, and I got some crackers. So I go outside. Did you drink the full 700 grams of sugar? Chisel, is, there's another guy that had also flatted that was in the parking lot. So Chisel went over to inspect him changing uh, his flat. Uh, while I'm drinking, chugging the 700 grams of Coca-Cola, uh, the the altercation comes outside. Okay. Uh, and the, As it should. Yeah. And the history continues between the two of them. How do you know there's history? I could like just what, tell. What was like? What was your gut feel? Because he, he was like, "I told you not to come in here. Oh, I, I told see. you okay. not to come." He brought back. up. He brought up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so then they they went into full fisticuffs, hmm. fighting. So they're they're hitting each other. Uh, they're both about the same size, probably like. <laughs> so it was a fair fight. Yeah, they're probably like five two to five four, yeah, both okay. of them. Uh, and I was just sitting there drinking my Coca Cola, bonked, um, watching them, uh, watching them, you know, sort things out. Uh, and, and at that point, I you know what I thought of? Huh? Miami. Oh, really? See, wow. I was like, this, <laughs> I'm freezing. I'm cold. I'm bonking. I'm on the highway. Yeah. There's a sea store owner fighting an unhoused person, and I'm drinking Coca Cola, and um, I can't wait to be in Miami in two weeks because this doesn't happen. For all these, this doesn't happen at Roberts. For all the foreigners that are listening that don't know what unhoused means, because I'm not sure if that's used in Europe. <laughs> But for some reason, America has decided that homeless is not the proper language that we use anymore and unhoused is, which I'm not, I don't, I'm not sure I quite understand. I haven't Googled it. I'm sure I could Google it and get a plethora. Because they have a home. Where's their home? Their, their home is where you make it. So they, they have, so under home the, is where okay, you make it. So under the bridge is home. Yes. The tent is their home. But under the bridge is not a house, technically. Correct. Exactly. Home is where the heart mm -hmm. is. Have you not heard the saying before? No, I have. I didn't even tell Chisel about the fist cups, by the way. Okay. I'm trying to decide what I'd be more offended by if I lived under a bridge. Like, would I be offended that someone was saying I was homeless? Or would I be offended that they're judging me because I don't have a house? So you know we, what I mean? So we ride back. <laughs> we get back. I get in the shower. First of all, I sit on the floor and contemplate life for like 20 minutes. Mm -hmm thousand yard stare okay uh get in the shower and then you come in and uh while i'm in the shower and tell me that yeah our um, friend had been hit by a car and that we had to go pick him up yes yes so our two friends married were riding out to stone mountain georgia 
which is a pretty typical route um, for us in Georgia or in Atlanta. And so it, it's so interesting because today set off a string of uh, like panic that only spouses of cyclists can truly know. The like call. If, the call. Yeah. Like that should be a, a Seinfeld show. But if show, you're riding together, that's it's no a, call. <laughs> that should be a Seinfeld show, like the call. Right. Because Kendall calls me and I'm like, hmm, this is strange. Like it's one of those things where like you're friends with all the people you ride with, but you don't necessarily like, call them all the time because you see it, you talk to them in person on the bike. So when you get a call from someone, you or, know there's something wrong. And when you get a call from someone's spouse, you really know there's something wrong. So yeah. I'm like, oh, oh no, oh no. Like I know what this call is going to be. So I kind of started to panic, answer the phone call immediately. I could tell by her voice that something bad had happened, but I was really, I was honestly really scared. She was injured. Like she had gone out for a ride and was hurt. Um, but then if, I realized if you're that, the person people call when they get hit by a car, you're living life, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I get that call a lot though. Yeah. Cause um, you are. I guess, or, or just says that you'll drop anything to go. Oh, drop. no, we don't have kids. That's what it is. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. So yeah, they're yeah. like, they're like, they're, they're not doing anything. They're not doing anything. So they'll <laughs> come pick me up. Um, but anyways, obviously I'm like, oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Like, you know, her husband got hit by a car. We got to go. And so I run in like Chad's in the shower. I'm like, yeah, the shower. We got to go pick up Jim and uh, Kendall. I haven't eaten, by the way. Jim got hit by a car. And um, so we go out there and... Two two fifty five TSS over four thousand calories. I haven't eaten. We're driving a pickup. Job. Yeah, he's bonking yeah. while we're driving, yeah. and we're running out of gas. Had a Coca Cola. <laughs> that was a Coke Zero. It didn't even have any calories. No, it was a Coca Cola. Oh, well, oh, where'd you get that from? At the gas station where the the C store owner. Oh, oh was I thought you meant fighting in the car. No, 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 okay. no. Yeah, no. Yeah. I was confused. Yeah. Um. So we picked them up, and at first glance, I was like, "Well, he doesn't seem that bad. Like he's like sitting on the curb, but he doesn't. He's not like that banged up from." When I look at him, but yeah. then he pulls out his hand and Mangled. it was, looked like he had gone in a fight with a chimpanzee. His fingers are pointing the wrong way. <laughs> it was like he stuck his hand in the cage of an animal. It was just it mangled. It's, yeah, that's the only way you can. I've never seen fingers go that direction before. Yeah. In, in bones. <laughs> it's not good. It was not good. Anyway, so it's been a big day. Yeah, uh, yeah. Really big, big day. day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But most people. And then we went to Nina and Rafi but, for but, a. No. 6.8 pizza. Yeah. 6.8 out of 10. Not good. My point with this story about the spouses is I then called Car called Carrie to try and get hold of Alan. And Carrie Dr. said, McDonald. yeah. And Carrie was like, oh gosh, I'm <laughs> like, Nikki's calling me. Right. What's happened? Has Alan crashed? And I was like, no, Alan hasn't crashed. But it's just funny how it sets off this like it's a weird domino world. effect of people panicking because they're getting a phone call from a spouse. Yeah. It's a weird world. Um. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. So uh, that's exciting. Yeah. But before you interrupted me, um, you were talking about uh, pizza, 6.8, Nina Rafi. I don't even want to talk about it. It was, I mean, I didn't have pizza. Nina Rafi is a self-proclaimed famous pizza place that's in our neighborhood that we haven't been to in over a year. Try to give it a try again and had a yet another disappointing experience. Not great. You wanted to talk about um, with running, what we were talking about last night with. Like the differences between running and cycling? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it, it is kind of a fun thing that I've been going through. It's like, uh, yeah, comparing like everything and running and everything to cycling as I get more into running. Welcome to my world. And here we go. Well, this is my world every time you get done with a group ride. I know, but the comparison. And you, and you recap the entire group ride over and over multiple times. <clears throat> so did the long run with Atlanta Run Club yesterday, starts at Piedmont Park. But what's interesting is, and this is like a pretty quick we started out like we you start out slower to like warm up um but then we got like increasingly faster and what's so interesting is it in, ends up like whittling down to very few women uh, mostly men that's the same as cycling which is the same as cycling but what's different is that and i don't know i think it's because this is a younger like i feel like an elder when i'm in these groups everyone i talk to is like i'm 22 or i'm 25 or i'm 27 so i feel old compared to to all the people i'm running with but what's interesting is there's no... That's good because you can suck their youth from them. True. Yeah, maybe that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Um, but I wasn't quite sure where you were going with that for me. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? That's why I hang out with young people. Yeah, yeah. Um, but they don't mansplain to you. No like mansplaining? They don't, yeah, there's no mansplaining. There's no like, like... So you're saying there's mansplaining in the Peloton? Yeah. <laughs> crazy no but like a lot of times when you okay so this is what gets me 
So I don't mind if like a friend, so after a long ride, like if you're going really hard, I don't mind if someone that knows me really well comes up and says like, oh, you rode really strong because they have something, they have like a base level to compare it to because they've seen me riding throughout the years. So they know like, oh, she was at one point not able to stick on this part and now she is. So it's like, a, it makes sense to say like, oh, great job. Like you pushed through something that you weren't able to push through before. Yeah. Um, but what always bothers me is when like a random guy and like when I say random guy, cause women don't do this to each other. A random guy will come up to me and be like, you rolled so strong today. Like you did such a great job, but I've never met them. I've never seen them. They, they're like not even a part of the Peloton. And in my mind, I'm like, are you just saying that because you were able to stick? And then like, I'm the only one of the only girls left. So you have like, it makes you somehow feel better to come compliment me because you like can't quite believe that there's a girl that's capable of doing what you're doing and the reason i say it is because like you don't have a base level knowledge of what i'm capable of for so what are you complimenting me on like i could be a professional in like this ride could be a recovery ride for me or a tempo ride for me just because you're in the red doesn't mean that i was in the red so like what are you complimenting me overcoming you know yeah, yeah. like when you don't know me and that doesn't happen in running no at least not in this group like yeah there's like we yeah, there's just no like, oh, you're running really strong today. You're, you're really like keeping the pace today. Like it's it's just, there's none of that. There's no, I don't know how to explain it. It's like not even a thought or like a conversation. Yeah. Um. So I think that's kind of, but it's it's really Like not. when an old guy pushes Sammy Rummels. On yeah, Airport there's ride. no, there's no, or, <laughs> or just like you'll go to rides and like some random older gentleman will decide that he has to like take it upon himself to ride next to you the whole time to point out every pothole and crack in the road. And it's like, I've done this ride a thousand times. I don't need you to point out every little thing in the road for me. And there's just like, I don't know. It's kind of nice that there's just none of that in the this particular run group. There might be in other run groups. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I, I just want to say that. But the, what's interesting though also is how no one shaves their legs. Yeah. That's the big thing for and me. And so I show up and like, I kind of feel overwhelmed by the amount of hairy legs that I see. Right. Like, because <laughs> you don't see hairy legs. Because I never see hairy legs. I just yeah. see like muscular, shiny legs. And so oily, shiny legs. Yeah. And so it's kind of <laughs> like when I show up, I feel like I'm in like a Dr. Seuss novel. What are those th like furry things that come out of the woods? I have no idea what you're talking about right <laughs> like, now. The like, the orange furry thing I, I'm not a that Dr. lives Seuss. in the woods. I, 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 you're, you're talking to the wrong person. <laughs> if we're going Dr. Seuss. The, um, All I know is green eggs and ham. Anyways, there's one Dr. Seuss where it's like an orange furry guy that lives in the woods and he protects the woods. I can't think of the name. There's people out there that have, they, they do know what I'm talking okay. about. But, but then I was thinking back to when I first met you and how you shaved your legs. Yeah, I was going to ask her, like, what would 2012 Nikki say about well, this Well, like, situation? I was really creeped out by your shaved legs. Creeped out? Creeped out, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Just go on. How, how was it creepy? <laughs> I don't know. I thought it was weird. <laughs> creepy, like, what What, what do you mean? Like, like, like serial killer? No, creepy? like, you're like, 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 I don't know. I don't know. It was just creepy. It was like an ick. Oh, before wow. it before saying like ick was a thing. Yeah. If I were to like rewind and like put a word to it, it would be today's version of ick. Okay. Well, when did my hairless legs go from ick to awesome? I don't know. I guess when I became a cyclist, <laughs> and I just saw it more and more. Oh. So yeah. Anyways, it's there's nothing wrong with hairy or non hairy legs. It's just funny how your your brain gets used to only seeing one thing, and then seeing the other thing is such like a shock. Yeah. That it just it's so weird, and so now hairy legs give me the ick. But it's not, it's not the Harry well, Lake's fault. If you could change the culture of Atlanta running world yeah, for a guy shaving the legs, that would be a big accomplishment. Maybe you should add that to your goals for uh, 2024. Could be. Just like yeah. start like subtly mentioning it. Mm -hmm. um, I thought you were going to ask me if I could change one thing about Atlanta running culture, what would it be? No. But, but if you were Do gonna... you have an answer for that? <laughs> yes. It would be wear glasses. I, sunglasses. I cannot believe how many people don't wear sunglasses. They just they squint? Wear. Yes. Weird. It's so strange. Yeah. Um, it, but I get compliments on my glasses constantly. And I'm like, yeah, like you too can own these glasses for <laughs> like however much money. Yeah. Um, but basically all I'm saying is like there's thousands of runners out there that apparently the glasses market is just not tapping into, which seems like a huge 
Well, you've talked to our friends at Koo about this. Uh, they, I don't think they took you seriously. Yeah. Uh, but they should. I can't have my new run friends going blind out there. Okay. Well, I'm sure there's something we can do to help them out with that. Yeah, I hope so. You uh, signed up for something big this week. Or I a did. lottery. Lottery. Yeah, I entered the lottery for Unbound. Something in my mind I thought I would never do because it just always, when you hear and read about it, it just always seems like a kind you of You literally a, said I have no desire to ever do that race. Miserable time. Uh, but Michael's doing it, obviously. And then Alan is going or entering the lottery. So I was like, uh, but I'm just going to do the hundred. I'm not, I'm not doing the 200 cause I don't, we're too busy. I don't want the stress of having to train for a 200 mile race. Yeah. And then we also signed or we're waiting. You're waiting on the Brooklyn half, which is next Friday. And if you get in, then I'm doing grand Fondo New York, which will yeah. be the same weekend, which will be a pretty big, big weekend for us. Uh, do you want to talk about Steamboat? Because I'm a little concerned. Yeah. Well, it's my uh, my friend. Was it Megan? Yeah. I think Megan sent me the article um, about how Steamboat is like basically battling with the ranchers that own the property that Steamboat, you know, the roads that it, the race goes through. Yeah. And <laughs> their number one, like, I guess, complaint is that people are urinating mid-race uh, on their property. I don't know if that's their number one. Their number one complaint, I think, is this, the roads being blocked for a day. Yeah. It's, like, ridiculous. Uh, but they're trying to use... Urination. Yeah, they're trying to use different, like, things to make a cyclist sound bad. Basically, these ranchers in Steamboat don't want this race to happen anymore. Um, as we know, we've got uh, inside track to our friend... Michael Rice at the uh, organization, and uh, he assured me that they're working it out. I, I think they're going to work it out. I think I think it's more of a progress versus not progress kind of story. Mm -hmm. Where I didn't realize Steamboat only has twenty five thousand people that live there, mm -hmm. so you bring three thousand people in on the weekend. That, that's a big deal, and I think all of these mountain towns out west are feeling the crunch of things changing. Yeah, like and and they don't like it. So and this is a like they see this event as uh, something that's bringing a lot of new people into town and probably a lot of new people are moving there. Like you and I, when we go there, we are like, wow, could we live here? Like during yeah, the summer, during yeah. the summer. Hell yeah. Uh, and so I think there's a lot of people that are probably buying new places. Like it's, it's, you know, it's a classic like Yellowstone story. Like yeah. it's like, you know, it's the Duttons not wanting new people moving in. And so, uh, they're targeting this race, but I, I think they'll work it out. Uh, I think the big message here is that the cyclists that go need to be use the very, porta potties. That yeah, um, and they need to be very conscious of this situation that's happening. And so just be respectful. Yeah, respectful and don't nice. throw your garbage on the ground. Like I don't understand who does that. <sighs> I've never thrown a piece of garbage. Oh, I always put it back in my pocket. Like that's such a weird thing to throw garbage on the ground. It's just people that don't do it often. They don't know the etiquette. Yeah. Or they don't care. And or they don't care. Same people that walk five abreast on the belt line. Yeah, exactly. Uh, it's the same people that, you know, just don't think anyone else exists except yeah. for them. And so you, like, I always I, say it's your world. We're just living in it. I've literally seen guys just like throw stuff on the ground. Yeah. And they're like, like someone will come behind me and pick up my stuff. Yeah. It's crazy. Uh, but can't do that steamboat. Don't please do don't, it. please don't do that don't steamboat. Don't ruin it for the rest of us. It's our most favorite event. And we've got. It's amazing. 17 people going. There's very few places in America that I think are more beautiful than steamboat. Yeah. I want to follow up on uh, something that. So unrelated. <laughs> this is very unrelated. I want to follow up. <laughs> On something that could not be more unrelated. I feel like I need to address because I recommended a movie a couple episodes ago, mm -hmm. Saltburn. Mm -hmm. And I said, I'm and not, what are you like? I'm not sure about your recommendation. You pointed out that I had fallen asleep for the <laughs> ending. <laughs> yes. And that maybe I should reconsider this I did. recommendation. Yes, I did. Since then, multiple people have watched the movie <laughs> based, on, based your on my recommendation. <laughs> And have given me feedback. <laughs> Goose is Oh, one. did Goose like it? Seems like his kind of thing. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so based on that feedback from these individuals uh, that have taken my recommendation, I went back and I watched. You went to bed at, you know, 8 o'clock one night, and I, uh, I watched the last 30 minutes. I, like, fast forward and remember. Mm. Uh, I don't think I can recommend the movie anymore after watching the last 30 minutes of Saltburn. But the last 30 minutes has gotten, uh, I forget his name, like whatever, Keo Barry, Barry Keo. Yeah, I don't know how, how he's uh, yeah. the Irish guy. 
has like blown him up. He's on like the cover of everything now. Yeah, no, I know. But I mean, so so it first of all, I got well, let's come back to that. I've got two there's two things I want to talk about. First of all, the storyline, they cram the last 20 minutes of like let's let's make this all conspiracy theory mm-hmm. and like and it just doesn't align. Yeah. Like it doesn't match the well, first. Well, the last 5 minutes. And then well, it's not <laughs> the last 5, it's the last like minute. The closing felt, felt scene, like five minutes. yeah, like you, as you had mentioned, was full frontal dancing. Um, That's a lot. Which probably prosthetic, I guess. I don't know. I don't um, think so. He said he felt. He said he felt really comfortable doing it. Wow. Okay. Um, Why do you say prosthetic? I don't know. Just you're like that guy. Like I, you're like that guy that's like good job trying to write. Like how do you know? <laughs> <laughs> you did a good job on the you did that a, final scene. Can't, can't be real. <laughs> uh, yeah. So um, maybe Barry's blessed. But then, yeah, you're right. So now he's uh, blown up. But um, I think a lot of people think he's gay and he's not gay, which yeah. you pointed out. Yeah. Um, and um, Well, his character is gay in the movie. And so yeah. I think what's interesting is like Hollywood has latched onto that. They're almost like using his character as a way to like define him as a person off the screen, like based on like just how I feel like when you read through all the comments, like if you if you look on Instagram, like at his pictures and like- the Well, how they're movie, dressing him yeah, for all the, these award shows. From the Golden Globes yeah, and the other awards shows, the comments are very much like people are just assuming his like sexual orientation. And <clears throat> I guess I'm also assuming his sexual orientation based on the fact that he just had a baby like a few months ago. But I don't think, I, I guess I, I feel like he's like playing into the hands of Hollywood versus just maybe being- like himself because if you look back before the movie he do, he his social media presence is very different than how it is now hmm. yeah it's more of just like a what the know. hell's he even been in before this i just meant his instagram is very different i know this is like random i know that he was the joker in the robert pattinson batman hmm. film he was only in like the last scene hmm Interesting. Because uh, I just remembered his name. I was like, who is this guy acting yeah. so crazy? I mean, he's really great. Like, he's an amazing actor. Yeah. Yeah, it was really good. But Hollywood, I just feel like, has their, like, claws. And they're almost, like, I wonder if Hollywood doing this, like, defining him as a human is going to put him in this weird, like, typecast type situation. I don't know. I mean, I, th- I think about, like, Heath Ledger and Jake Gyllenhaal. They didn't get typecast. They were. They did the exact same thing. In oh, Brooke and like Back. Brokeback Mountain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah. So, so I don't know. It's just know. interesting. We'll Very yeah. interesting. Well, I'm not recommending uh, Saltburn anymore. You want to talk about the the new fad that everyone's doing? Uh, I, it's not a fad. It's just January is the most annoying month of the year. <laughs> Why? A variety of reasons. Mm. Starting with if you go back to the beginning of time, New Year's resolutions, which are just ridiculous. Yeah. Um and that fad new year's the the ancient fad of new year's resolutions has now led us to I'm gonna, dry da- dry january yeah i'm gonna this is people can be mad at me about this i don't think i'm just mad. not into dry january uh, i think you have I, a I had valid reason though. so many conversations yesterday like people like five guys told me they were doing dry january yesterday one guy had just told me he was going to a concert two-day concert next weekend it's like a music festival yeah and i was like so you're not drinking or well, your two-day music festival and he's like oh well yeah i mean up at the weekend like w- one weekend of dry january i'm doing that <laughs> i'm like what's the what's the point what are you doing yeah because then you're just gonna go back to your normal life but the other side of it like i struggle with it because i think about it can set off good habits it's a, it's if it does that then i'm fine with it yeah. and it also it's an extremely uh valiant accomplishment it's the virtue signaling of dry january <laughs> that drives signal. me insane like this like the talking about it constantly talking about it constantly but not actually doing it. like it's damp january really like what you're doing is just like basically what you do is not drink during the week yeah and then just drink on the weekend right but if you're going to change your lifestyle as a result of it fine but most of the people who I, are I doing think- it i would say that most people are doing it are just virtue signaling I did dry 35. <laughs> 35 years. Yeah, 35 years. <laughs> I, I think that's dry. why you get so annoyed by it. I think so. Because yeah. it doesn't annoy me that much. You haven't accomplished shit. I was, I didn't, I was, <laughs> I was sober for 35 years, yeah. almost 36 years. Yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah. And then you fell off the wagon. Yeah. 
Well, no, I wasn't ever on the wagon. I got on the wagon. Got off the wagon? No, I got, got off the you wagon. You got off the I was wagon. Al- I was living you, on the wagon you, for 35 years. You had been years. like an Amish person riding on the back of a wagon for like your entire life, and then you decided to just step off one Exactly. Day, and and never... I think that's what it is. Like, you're not accomplishing anything by proving me that you can't drink for a month. Try, yeah. tr- try not drinking for 35 straight you're years. You're kind of just the wrong audience. Maybe that's it. I think you're just the wrong audience. Well, that guy. You should that... have a shirt that says, don't talk to me about your dry January. <laughs> <laughs> That guy a that we're talking sticker. about, the, the, the story in his name rhymes with Mispin. Um, I, I turned around Does and told him. Does he listen to the podcast? No, there's no way. There's no way Mispin <laughs> listens to the podcast. Uh, but when I told him that I had never had a drink until I was 35 years old, I, I, I could tell like his wheels were just like, complete, like the gears had started grinding. And like, I don't think he talked the rest of the run. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Yeah. I think for me, like I, I like if, if people, if people decide, okay, new year, I need to make a resolution. New year, new me. Pe- okay. People have too many resolutions. I honestly think that's kind of like the biggest like issue is people feel the need to make a list of resolutions where I'm kind of like, what if you just pick one resolution and you're just really serious about it all year? You know? So like f- for me, my one resolution I picked this year was to read more books. And I've already been doing that. I've read every single day. Yeah, you're crushing it. Every single day. And it doesn't matter what the books are. I just wanted to read more books. And it, and there's honestly no like real reason behind it other than I'm trying to cut down on like screen time and TV time. So I f- have to fill it with something. Um, but but I didn't, cr- but I, like I think people have too many, like I want to lose 10 pounds. I want to stop drinking. I want to read more books. I want to learn a language. Like that's overwhelming. So it's like, it's the pressure to create so many goals I think that ends up in failure versus like, why don't we all just create like one goal? You yeah. Know? Yeah. I don't know. I, I don't. It's also like your lifestyle. Like people that say. I don't do anything that I don't want to do. Maybe yeah. that's what I think about. So you don't have one resolution this year? Like you don't have one thing that you're trying to do differently. Uh, Grow the business more. Like I, I don't even, I don't like those kind of, like those are goals. They're not personal. No, I don't have any personal resolutions to where I need to change any habits that I feel like I need to be changed hmm. unless you want to tell me something. I don't know. Sounds like you're not self-aware. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, so you think my resolution of reading more books is. No, I think that's great. No, I know I do. I think I mean, I've been impressed by your dedication to Nikki does this thing where she actually listens to a book and reads it at the same time. But, but she listens to the audio book and reads it. I couldn't do that. You you go back and forth. You'll like listen to a chapter and then you'll read a chapter. Yeah, yeah. That's, an, that's crazy to well, me. Well, because I can't read while I'm walking outside. So I listen to the book while I'm walking outside and then yeah. like before bed is when I like to actually read. Yeah. And so instead of watching TV, I'll go upstairs and I'll just sit in the bed and read. You got new lamps in the bedroom for that. Yeah, exactly. But I will say that um, the book I'm reading now is really, really good to where I actually prefer to read it than listen to it on Audible. Um, I don't know why, but I just do. And it's called Educated by Tara Westover. It's it's a biography. I feel like it's I'm an, reading this book. By yeah, way. it's an autobiography, but it is really interesting. <laughs> really interesting. So anyone that needs an interesting read. Um, it's It gives you perspective because she's had a crazy life. Crazy. Yeah. But not in the way of like so many books are like about how people grew up in like terrible poverty or like, you know, people grew up with like out of dad or out of mom or like, I don't know. There, there's kind of like the typical autobiography i went through like i grew up in the slums i pulled myself out of it that type of thing this is totally different yeah like how she grew up is so messed up yeah but it's next level but it's just a very different um view into america yeah and what is out there i think that's what's so shocking is like everyone knows that there's like bad parts in the cities there's bad parts in the country there's you know everyone knows that there's like these really impoverished areas of america but what people I think don't think about is the areas that are more middle class, but like ruled by religion and paranoia. Like when you're like, who voted for this person? And it's like, the, these, yeah. the, like this, these people, like, yeah. you know? And so it, anyways, it, and you it, it can just, never understand them unless you listen to a story like this. Yes. And so yeah. listening, even though you do know that people are out there like that, you don't realize like it's more, it's like, it's more prevalent than you think. Anyway, yeah. so I grew up I, around a lot of people like that. Like, yeah, I but, can appreciate that. Yeah, but it's even different. Like, because it's different you, than panhandle people? Yes, because you grew up in the South. This is 
mid this is idaho utah but it is very different than than like the south yeah so anyways okay. it's, it's really good that's um, good just, good recommendation yeah okay the the only other thing i think that which is really um the only other thing uh another thing that i wanted to mention that is timely and relevant uh that we haven't touched on are all of the new kits mm. are out mm -hmm. for pro cycling and i wanted to get your take on my rating of them yeah. uh because and i don't want to go through each one of them i, th I think there's some huge losers and then i think i'll give you my top three right. the, the reason i think we're talking about this is because we're in the midst of designing kits right now yeah and so for people that don't know a big part of our agency is um cycling design uh and so nikki spends a lot of time in you designing kits uh for our team but now we're designing kits for michael garrison racing uh and there's going to be at least four different variations of the kit yeah and we've been going through the process and you can tell the organizations that think about the process of design versus just throw something on there. Mm -hmm. And so maybe, maybe talk about our process a little bit in terms of like what we're, when we're designing Michael Garrison racing mm -hmm. kits right now, what's our, our inspiration? Well, our process starts with essentially like a mood boarding, which is, every, you know, every good creative process probably should. But race cars is kind of the mood board, like, but Vin modern, vintage racing. But yeah, like, well, vintage, but modern, high end, not like a NASCAR, but like more like Porsche racing, Le Mans. Aston Martin, Le yeah. Mans type racing. Um, so that's the inspo and we create a mood board around it. Then we pull in different colors, pull in different logos, pull in different uh, inspiration. And from there we start building out how we want the kit to look. And then after we decide on how we want the kit to look, we start playing around with different colors, possibly different patterns. Uh, and it, yeah, it's a pretty like organic collaborative process. It's, it's me, you, Michael, all chatting about, you know, what we like, what we don't like. And it's really fun. And it takes time. It definitely takes time. Yeah. And you have to understand how the kits fit together, what it'll look like on the bike. Yeah. So that's, that's the, that's the thing about like, I will see kits designed and you can tell immediately if it was designed by someone who rides. Um, and someone who doesn't ride because there's a lot of fashion designers who've tried to get into the kit business and they're like, oh, I'm going to design a kit and they design it as if it's a t-shirt. And what people don't realize is we are like hunched over the bike. So a lot of times they're thinking about what it looks like when you stand up. Yeah. They think about what, it, yeah. When you're standing up, right. And that's just not really the position that you're on most of the time if you're a cyclist. Um, and they also don't, which is honestly more impactful for women's kits um, women's kits, you really have to take into consideration like placement, because if you place a giant logo across the chest, uh, it can look very different and on very different bodies. Um, so you kind of always say in like, if you place a logo across the back of the bibs, it can look very different on very different bodies. Men tend to have similar shapes in like, especially in the pro peloton, like small hips, small waist, small upper body, uh, not small as much. everything. Yeah. Not as much variation, but, yeah. the, but the women, obviously there's more variation. So you have to just take into consideration like a lot of placement of design. Yeah. Okay. So with that in mind, I actually just sent these two because we're sitting too far away. Okay. But I think the biggest miss is, which I'm just shocked by, DSM. Mm. You remember what the kits used to look like? It used to be a black kit. Mm -hmm. Like remember when Corn Rivera was on the team? Yeah, yeah. It wasn't bad. It wasn't bad. What What do you think about that? Finding Nemo. <laughs> <laughs> so DSM, if that's what you're going for, you did a good job. Because like the little orange thing in the middle is like What is finding. that? I don't even like... Yeah, it's Finding Nemo. Yeah. That, that was the inspiration. So 100%. that's that's by far the biggest loser. Um, I sent you another one, AG2R. A lot of people are hating on this kit, AG2R, but actually I kind of like it. It's is like, that a decathlon? Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's not bad. I don't think it's bad. But So the reason I say this is because there's another podcast. Why is it decathlon? That's, uh, that's like the dick sporting goods of France. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's not bad. It, yeah, it's just kind of simple. So like... So Why are people hating on it? Like there's a saying? podcast that claims that they are, uh, it's called, uh, actually, I'm not going to say the name of it. It's just focused on um, cycling fashion. Oh, interesting. But it's like three guys that aren't designers. Uh, talking. Are they cyclists? Yeah, but but they're the, they're the guys that 
hate on they spent the, like 30 minutes because i was like i knew we were going to talk about this so mm-hmm. i wanted to listen to it yeah, yeah. they they're the kind of guys that, that spend 30 minutes hating on people that do festive 500 oh yeah that's weird and you know what that you know what that is yeah yeah no. if you hate wait why you what why do you hate on people wait, do why, why do they hate on it because they can't do it oh but they they spend like oh you know, so much time talking about how much they but hate. But what do they people say that, when they they hate it? Is that it you like, should just ride for fun. Is it like you saying that you that should <laughs> that you should spend time with your family? That's what they say. You should spend time with your yes, family. Yes. Yes. What yes. if you don't have a family? That's rude. Exactly. <laughs> what the hell? Um, what if you're better with your family because you do Festive Five Hundred? Exactly. Uh, yeah. So that that that's their whole thing. And they hate on Strava. They hate the people that use Strava. Why? What do you think? Why people that hate Strava? Hold on, I gotta look these guys up. What's what's it called? I, uh, they they Gosh. they never show themselves. Really, but they're not designers. You can tell by the way they, they talk that they're not designers. Anyway, I was listening to them go through, and they one of the the things they did is they the world's only podcast dedicated to cycling fashion. They're wrong about that, and that's that's why I wanted to bring this up because I wanted us to, to kind of talk through. Like, I, I'll give you. So I told you the the biggest loser. Well, well, let me ask you this: What do you think about EF's new kit? Because EF uh, is always kind of, I think, held up in terms of a design standard. They always do a, I think, a fairly great job at design kits. I know that they are painted pretty closely within a box in terms of their sponsor coloring and design, so yeah. they have to be pink. Um, uh, but have you looked at EF's new kit? Oh, I like it. Okay. Like good it. take. What, do you not like it? Um, I'm not sure about the yellow. I mean, I think, I think it's, I think it's good. I think that they're trying to do something different. I think it looks cool. I'd wear it. Okay. Yeah. I like it. I like it. So my top three, mm-hmm. here's the big takeaway. My top three. The bike looks cool. How they designed the bike. Yeah. It looks really cool. Yeah. 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 They always do a good job with the bike. Top three are all. Mm-hmm. From the women's Peloton. Always. F de Jeu. F de Jeu. Number three. Yeah, it's like tie-dye. Well, it's it's very um it's very close to their design last year. They just updated their their design, but it's I think it's super cool because yeah. it's the obviously blue and the red and the white of the French flag. Uh they've got your favorite or maybe your second favorite cyclist, Sicily, on there. Um, uh, and, um, uh, it just, it's well designed. It's really, really well thought out. Uh, second place. But their new kits aren't blue and red and white. Their new kits are orange and yellow and No, that's their training kit. Oh. That's the training. The training kit looks great too. Okay. Yeah. I like both. Um, second place is going to be a shocker for you. Mm-hmm. Canyon Shram. Yeah. No, they always have good kits. No, but you would, I would think you would think that that would be number one. They updated their kit. They they yeah. they've had the same kit. The yeah, last but I know you're number one, and I disagree with it. I know that's why it's controversial. No, who's who's my number one? Life plus Wahoo. And not even because we love Wahoo, but because the design uh, is well thought out. It's unique, uh, and it looks really cool. Yeah. No, I mean it's cool. I just I don't know why the the green bibs throw me off. Yeah, they have green bibs. Yeah. They're- Look it up, but uh, it's map, so it looks, you know. I mean, it fits it's, well. It's very map designed. Map is a brand, by the way. Uh, and uh, I, I just appreciate them going out on a limb and doing something completely different. So, yeah, I agree. Green bibs for Michael Garrison Racing. <laughs> okay, so we're uh, we're getting ready for our trip to Miami. Uh, we've got one more week in Atlanta, but uh, we'll be heading to Miami after that. Um, Cannot wait. Miami Half Marathon. We're also bringing bikes. Yep. So we're going to be doing the rides. And we're bringing Michael. (laughs) (laughs) We're going to put Michael in the um, the bike bag. Yeah, in the top of the roof. Actually, he's in Austin, and he's going to meet us down there. um, For content. It's going to take some pictures. uh, But we're going to be doing the rides. We're going to definitely. Atlanta Atlanta Run Club sending a bunch of people down there. So we'll be doing shakeout shakeout runs with Nike. And uh, Michael and I will definitely be doing the Zeal rides. Yep. Are you, You're going to do some Zeal rides too, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm going to do like the, the start of some of them. I mean, we'll see all our Zeal friends. Um, looking forward to that. And um, yeah, so any Miami uh, friends that we have, if you've got some more recommendations, we're always looking for more recommendations. Well, we're staying in Wynwood. So it's normally, almost been a year since we've been down there. Do you realize that? Yeah, that's why I've been depressed all year. Yeah. 
because they haven't um, been up to Miami enough. So we're staying in Wynwood for the first time ever. Normally we stay in Brickell or Coconut Grove. Yeah. Um, we're staying in Wynwood because it's a little bit closer to the start of the race. Yeah, race start. And, and we kind of just want to like test out a new area. Yeah. Um, which we obviously have spent a lot of time in Wynwood, like eating and walking around, but we've just never stayed there. So if anyone has any good recommendations, send them send them our way. Yeah, recommendations. Elizabeth, we know you're listening. Uh, Gunter. Yeah, what's your Enrique. favorite places? Yeah, I mean, we, we normally do a lot of nice dining because... We're trying to do more casual this time. Yeah, I think so. Especially, yeah, we'll have Michael. We want to show him around too, so... Um, casual, local, authentic. Exactly. That's what I'm thinking. That's exactly what I was saying. It was like local, authentic. Where do you eat? Yes. Where do you hang Local out? Miamians. Right. We also are bringing the dogs down, so we're driving. Oh, I forgot that really important part. I'm so excited. Can't I'm wait for so that. so excited. Nine hour drive. Is it nine or 11? I don't know. Someone asked me that today. On I the said run, nine. I, I really didn't know. And someone challenged me on nine. But oh, really? I, I think it's nine. I, think, I said nine as well, so. Not that bad if you think about it. No, no, it's not terrible. Yeah. I mean, you'll, Other be, than the, you'll the, be driving the whole time, but. Yeah, I'll be driving. You'll be <laughs> sleeping. I uh, No, that is not true. You and Hutch I will never, be sleeping. Me and Amy I will be awake. I never sleep when you drive. <laughs> take that back. Okay, I take it back. I always talk to you. You want to sleep. I want to, but I, but I don't yeah. because I'm nice. Yeah. Well, so we'll have another episode. Next week, we've got a guest uh, that we've already recorded and we're really, really exciting. Really, really, really excited about. From the cycling world. Very relevant to the what we just recorded. Uh, and, um, it's going to be fun. We had a lot of great feedback from last week's episode with Darius. A lot of people feeling bad about their lack of dog training. Lots of guilt, uh, <laughs> that we've, uh, now stirred up from our friends and listeners about not training their dogs. Sorry about that. But, uh, yeah, I'm not sorry. People need to train their dogs more. Train them. Train them. Uh, so hopefully Darius has gotten some calls from some folks from the culture edit. Saying, hey, we need to get that, that dog trained. Um, <laughs> get that dog trained. <laughs> exactly. It's never too late. Um, but uh, it was so cool for Darius to do that. Uh, and, and we didn't even like get to elaborate. But like, you know, Darius brought so many people in and we had an audience. Yeah, and, it was really fun. Uh, a lot of fun. And he's done a great job uh, promoting that. So yeah, we really appreciate him and everything. Shout out to everything. Darius and um, need to get Hutch out to the facility to, to work out. Yes, for yeah. sure. Thanks for everyone joining <laughs> us. We we had plans to talk about some work stuff, but uh, it's been too long. Uh, we'll talk about that next time. All right. Over and out. Thanks for listening. Later. I got hairy legs. Hairy legs that turn blonde in the sun. In the sun. Come up my legs. From the moon.